Hello everyone, hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are and today there's many news, let's just dive into it. The first, I want to start off with Ethereum hard forks are incoming and the implications to you, right? And many other news. First, right, is that um, as many of you know, the Ethereum hard fork is expected to happen on February 28th, right? And this is the exact date that um, is uh, UTC 7... 26 p.m. on February 28. You can see the time, uh, the date and the time here in this slide and you can actually go to the website, right? amberdata.io slash blocks slash 728-0000, right? Four zeros at the back after 728 and you can see actually the countdown of the two hard forks for uh, Ethereum. Now, just to recap, it has been delayed before because in early January, they already said that they expect the hard fork to happen on uh, January 16. But then at the time, I think not long, just before the launch, uh, just before the scheduled fork or uh, upgrade, they then found a bug and then they have been delayed. It. And now the latest date is then expected to be February 28th. Now the key for you the, the, to know is that if you have Ethereum, and many of you probably have, right? And that's why I just want to highlight to you that, that you don't have to do anything. And the key is that keep, you know, you can remain keeping it in your, either your ledger or your Binance wallet, right? Or your MyEther wallet. And you don't need to do anything because these hardware wallets and exchange, they will do the upgrade themselves and your, um, you know, your, your coins will be safe. The thing is this, try not, right? Very, very key to don't trade around this period, around this date. So that means starting from now, it's probably best to not buy and sell Ethereum, yeah? And that's the key I want to highlight. And just to recap, what does this uh, hard fork do? Now, just to be very, very clear, this hard fork, unlike Bitcoin Cash forking from Bitcoin where they separate coins, additional coins are created and then, you know, different communities. This hard fork for Ethereum is just an upgrade, right? It is called forking because they basically need to um, improve the codes, right? And that's why it has is called forking because it's just splitting the code now to a better version and the old code will then be just con discontinued. Just to key to highlight this is just an upgrade. And what does it do? It basically will make the, the code more streamlined so it's better for developers. Uh, and more importantly, it, it reduces the award in terms of mining from three units of Ethereum to two units of Ethereum. Now, for some people, it might be bad, but the thing is actually when something became more scarce, the value generally increases, assuming the demand keeps stable or increasing. Yeah, So that is actually more important. Um, it is a positive development. And of course, it is hopefully, right, and fingers crossed that this upgrade this fork happens as per schedule right so then no more delay and because really i think a lot of people are just want to get this over with and move on to the next de uh, next development because this hard fork is a very key foundational layer of improvement to the ethereum network before they can you know go on to implement the scaling uh, capability yeah so definitely very very important and less fingers crossed that it will just go smoothly and then it will be positive for ethereum overall and moving on bitcoin lightning tech expands beyond invoices in step towards better ux now so just uh first of all it is important to highlight that lightning network despite having so much publicity and so much uh visibility over uh, Twitter, right, and news media of uh, focusing on cryptocurrency because there's a lightning torch movement going around, even passing to Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter. It is still very, very important to note that lightning today is still in its testing stage and the team behind lightning will continue to improve on it. And they have recently just, you know, working on improving a interesting feature for lightning which is very very important for the user experience what it is is that today and as part of the lightning torch movement as well for anyone to receive any payment through the lightning network in bitcoin they have to issue an invoice so that means the the recipient has to first take an action yeah um 
And then the thing is this, once you give out that invoice with the stated address to the sender to send you, the address can only be used one time and after that is invalid. So now the latest improvement that they uh, have found is that they are going to have a permanent address. So it's like a public address, which is a permanent that you can reuse and reuse. That means you can, you know, for example, a lot of uh, YouTubers, uh, when they create content, they normally just put their public address for their Bitcoin in their description to receive tips, to receive donation, right? So for that means if they if they created a video even one year ago, that address will remain the same. But if Lightning Network Today, if you were to adopt that, that means you have to keep changing your uh, public address for people to send the Bitcoin. And it is definitely very, very not user friendly, right? And it just takes too much time on the part of the recipient. So in this case, the recipient doesn't really need to bother until they check their balance occasionally. Then when they see the additional balance, then they know that they have received some tips or donations, but they don't really need to know who is it from, right? I mean, it's not super critical, but in 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 any case, it is definitely very, very uh, user-friendly and very encouraging to see that the team at Lightning Network continue to push the envelope, continue to enhance this, right? Uh, yeah, I think this is very, very important. Next, a crypto project that raised $20 million is called Faking is Founding Team. So BHB is the coin that has been alleged. And this is a proprietary research done by Coindesk, right? Uh, and they have actually found that, um, you know, they have found some proof that show that BHB project is indeed, you know, very, very shady. Yeah. And what is it is that they have found, um, you know, th this project when they did the um, funding round in their white paper, they have actually faked a lot of details. They have actually that means make up a lot of fake stories about their founders. And this is the picture, as you can see. And a lot of them, they just take the picture from other university or, you know, major universities out, their professors of major universities, and just change the name. And in some cases, they didn't even change the name. So, and then Coindesk team actually went on to check with the people, with the person involved. So Bobby White is actually um, another person name right he actually worked in Tsinghua University in China and then when he was asked he said actually no he doesn't know anything about BHB and he definitely is not one of the founding team behind BHB similarly with Gregory Moss as well uh, he is with another university similarly he's he denied any dealings or any connection with BHB so really really very dodgy and um so the thing is this, this is a China-based project. First of all, I don't know, really know how they could, you know, I guess this is just done illegally. Um, they didn't have to go through the government because government in China are against any ICOs, but still they are managed to raise funds and it seems that they have used the, um, you know, something like a multi-marketing level kind of selling a sales method to actually get the funding. But so that's the thing when something, I mean, so that, that, I think all this news, right, I mean, scams are a lot, very commonplace now in this space because we are still very early days. Um, so one regulation coming in is definitely very good to make sure we don't have any more of this kind of incidents going forward. Second is that for Binance Launchpad, which is actually, you know, they, they, they list um, ICO projects, right? Any, any projects that at least are listed or chosen by Binance Launchpad, now definitely given all this news, it just helps to boost Binance Launchpad credibility because Binance will first do a vetting definitely of the project that they are listing because it directly impact their reputation. If So for example, if BHP were to list on Binance Launchpad, Binance team will definitely, research team will definitely do a more thorough check vet on BHP and this in this kind of um, shady details will have been discovered before they can be launched right? and it will have been rejected by Binance if they found it because if they were to list BHP and then all these shady details were to find out that be discovered later, Binance reputation is at stake. So, so definitely I think while it is very, I'm sorry as well for the investors in BHP because now they, they cannot even withdraw their funds, um, all funds are froze, all funds withdrawal are froze 
at least to date, and they cannot be reached as well by Coindesk, Binance, this launchpad initiative is definitely has upper end and really show that Binance is really forward looking. Uh, next, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak said that we have seen massive value creation in Bitcoin. So Bloomberg actually asked Wozniak, right, if he still expects Bitcoin to become the world's currency in the future, an idea he expressed in June 2018. After we have seen massive value destruction in Bitcoin, the entrepreneur counter said, I'm not sure I can buy that we have seen massive value destruction. I think we have seen massive value creation. Um, so this is interesting because you must see Apple was that is I mean he is one of the Apple co-founder right Steve was that is one of the Apple co-founder and definitely is in super intelligent people like this when you must give their thoughts right um some weight definitely and now that he he regard as we have you know Bitcoin have actually created a lot of value creation that is actually very very good endorsement for Bitcoin yeah though he he said that he still doesn't have or at least in january he said he does he has already sold out all his bitcoin because he doesn't want to be one of those people keep watching the price point of bitcoin so i'm not sure whether he has bought yet or whether or whether he thinks it's still not low enough for he to for him to buy in again so definitely very interesting it'd be you know cool if one day if you find out that he's already buying then yeah that'd be very interesting but just again just my thought right yeah mm. He didn't say that he's buying now, but he only said that is massive value creation, and that is again just give a lot of credibility, a lot of boost to Bitcoin. Next, Fidelity joins one point nine million dollar round in blockchain data startup Coin Metrics. So, Coin Metrics have secured one point nine million from Fidelity, Highland Capital Partners, and Dragonfly Capital. Uh, so the key is this coin metrics is the ceo is actually formerly from consensus and thomson routers so thomson routers is a company very very a uh, huge name in the traditional stocks and bond space because they do a lot of analysis of um you know financial assets and now they're moving on to crypto so again you see a flow of talent into crypto but not only that this company they have actually been uh, established since 2017 so already more than 10 years yeah uh, sorry 2017 so that is about two years two years but they have always been offering free information but their niche is that they are for, for uh, focusing on giving transparency data that you know you can basically check back their data against the source you can vet it for yourself and that is why one of the key point why fidelity buys into them and don't forget fidelity are going to offer their own crypto custody solutions and crypto trading so it is not surprising that you know that they are also strengthening their um team with a well-regarded research team that you know very transparent and um, they are able to give you even a source data to uh, verify right so that shows that they have very strong confidence in their research so this company will provide uh, com customized research reports and also market data and indexes so they will choose those exchanges that is very reliable to actually um, you know source their data so as you know uh not i think it was in january there was a report by transparency institute that shows that many most of the ex crypto exchanges out there are reporting fake volume um, among the um, the ones that they look at only bitfinex and binance are showing 100 percent real data as you can see in the chart here bitforex for example is also only seven percent accurate that means 93 percent of their data is faked okx as well 88 percent of their trading volumes are fake so you know that's the thing so definitely for coin metrics they will only take from very reputable ones like coinbase gemini binance bitfinex yeah so also very important for i guess for the people in this space to really know um the truth right and of course especially more important for institutions and fidelity after all are catering to institutions so definitely they need to have very strong research right fully backed by facts and figures 
Next, blockchain fund launches with $22 million round backed by Roger Veer. So Switzerland-based Pangea blockchain fund is making its debut after closing a 22 million, 22 million seat round backed by crypto investor Roger Veer. But what is interesting about this is it's fully regulated uh, in Switzerland and they will invest in transformative blockchain startups around the world to provide them with an early stage capital boost and other resources. Though they say they have no plans to invest in cryptocurrency. Now, remember, Roger Ver is the person behind Bitcoin Cash who forked from Bitcoin. And he has always been in the news, a bit controversial, always you know attacking Bitcoin, saying Bitcoin Cash is always better than the Bitcoin. Now he's investing in a fund that doesn't invest in that doesn't invest directly into cryptocurrency very very interesting to see why you know what's his real motive of doing this is he backing out from bitcoin cash and he's looking at you know other opportunities that will make him more money and more returns not sure but you know it is interesting to see the development of what he is into next Next, blockchain home equity loan platform raises $65 million. So a blockchain-based home equity loan platform called Figure, they've raised $65 million from various major financial and venture capital firms, including Morgan Creek, DST Global, DCM, Nimble Ventures. Yeah. Um, what is interesting is that, you know, the again, this is one of those firms, is a lending firm, right? And is based on blockchain. So Morgan Creek is investing in this. So that ought to tell you again the potential. Uh, why are all these venture capital firms investing in the infrastructure firms that are building on blockchain? So it is very key for their invest for them to invest in this kind of firms because they to attract institutional investors like pension funds, right? Which Morgan Creek has done recently. These pension funds are definitely more comfortable by first investing investing in equity of companies that participating in blockchain because they're more familiar with the kind of asset class and they need to probably be warm up first to the idea of you know investing in something related to blockchain but not directly crypto first and then in the future if you want to convince them that oh you see the use cases and that's why the crypto has real use cases and then they can better make that connection so you see right it has to be a step-by-step -step warming up process so you will see this playing out so definitely for pension funds to invest directly into crypto it will still take some time um it, though the morgan craig one fairfax county they are investing a very small portion um of their funds into directly into crypto but not yet not immediately but already they said they, they will yeah it's just a matter of time really so wall street journal cio network said blockchain adoption is still early so experts and industry players have said that the adoption of blockchain technology is still in its early stage at the annual meeting of wall street journal cio network so very key is that this wall street journal cio network is Definitely, who acts, who meets there, right? Who are the people who network there? Are chief inf chief inf chief information officers and technology experts from largest companies around the world, including like JP Morgan, IPM, and it is very interesting that they said that adoption of blockchain technology is still in its early stage, though they recognize that you know um things can happen really really fast after that the adoption can happen really fast so my point is the reason i want to highlight this is that i think it's very good that you know people in the traditional space the big incumbent companies still do not see blockchain and crypto as a major threat so let them pretend right let them still ignore and they're already still a small sign of some of them breaking out and starting to fight it but then many of them are still in the ignoring stage right um or laugh at you stage so yeah definitely i think it's very good while all the teams all the key serious people in crypto continue to push on to develop you know the key killer products right and that is very very important so when they when they wake up and realize that blockchain and crypto is very important then you know the key blockchain and crypto world already have moved on to another big milestones yeah Next, Shapeshift presents six episodes show dedicated to crypto enthusiasts. So Shapeshift slash IO, they have posted in their Twitter account that they are launching um, kind of a movie, right? So really interesting. And they, they are catering like um, 
various key people. First one is the technologist featuring Zuko Wilcox, CEO of Zcash, talks about his path in crypto, the privacy issues and advantages of cryptography. Second is featuring the humanitarian uh, Nila Roger, CEO and founder at Mama Hope and Satoshi is female. And, um, you know, focusing on her stance on the use of cryptocurrencies for the unbanked. The third innovator is about Digor Gutierrez Saldivar, CEO of RSK Labs, an open source smart contract platform to empower people and improve their lives. Venture Capitalist tells the story of Malcolm Demiros, Chief Strategy Officer of Cryptocurrency Investment Products and Research Provider CoinShares. Fifth episode, Musician follows Tatiana Moros, right, who created an artist coin dubbed Tatiana Coin and wrote a jingle for Bitcoin. The last episode is featuring Eric Verhees, who founded Shapeshift, and he wants to talk about mainly what is the social impact of Bitcoin. So, as you can see, you can... Um, check out their link at the Twitter at shapeshift.io and you can just click on the link and you can then start watching the episodes. I think the only one, the first episode is released. The thing is, this is really, really interesting because I think this is a definitely a very smart way to bring more visibility to the crypto space. And uh, also, this is via an uh, infotainment way, right? And it's entertainment and which means people are definitely more likely to watch something that is entertaining, right? Especially for non-adopters of crypto at this stage. Yeah? So at least you plant a seed in the non-crypto's mind. Um, next on regulators, Russian President Putin orders gov government to adopt crypto regulation by July 2019. So he has ordered his government to enforce crypto-related regulation by July 1st, 2019. And um, yeah, this is really, really interesting because in last year, apparently, it's not the first time he said it, in July last year as well, he has actually asked his government to adopt crypto regulation, but they still haven't done it. So now he has actually given them a strict timeline to actually have it and enforce it by July 1st this year. It's very, very interesting because there was a rumor lot. I think it was end of last year or early this year that says that because of sanctions from the US, right, Russia government has plans to divert a huge percentage of their reserves into cryptocurrency. And if that really materialized, this is really, really huge. Can you imagine a government that has been sanctioned? Um, so it's a real finding a real use case. And of course, even a small percentage of their reserves is a lot for the overall crypto market, right? So that, yeah, it's just really, really fascinating what is happening now in this space. Next, Swiss blockchain hackathon in June includes partnerships with PwC, Amazon Web Services. So the three-day event is reportedly organized by Switzerland's six leading blockchain and IT organizations, yeah, including the Bitcoin Association Switzerland, Civil Labs Crypto Valley Association, Swiss Blockchain Federation, and Swiss ICT. And it happened on June 21st and June 23rd. The key is that they are featuring big names like Accenture, Amazon Web Services, PwC, and very interesting to know that Cardano is going to be present as well. So it seems that they are the only project that, only crypto project, excuse me, only crypto project that will be there. So this hackathon is, you know, trying to develop new um, new use cases for blockchain. So very, very interesting. And you see a lot of big names supporting this initiative. Now, you mostly only heard of, before this, you only mostly heard of hackathons being held by Binance, by Tron, right? People who have, uh, who are active players in this space. But now it is even held by non-profit organizations, right? That really just want to foster innovation in this space. So very, very encouraging to watch. And that is, just ought to tell you so much interest, so much commitment into this space. Lastly, National University of Singapore and Chinese tech firm to research blockchain. So National University of Singapore and US will work with a Chinese tech company to research and develop blockchain solutions. As part of a blockchain and big data seminar held in the city of Chongqing in Sichuan province, NUS will collaborate with the local business Chongqing to on innovations that also include big data and artificial intelligence. This news is significant because NUS is the top university in Singapore, a major financial hub in Asia, and 
And U.S. is also one of the top universities globally, right? And now that they are working with a Chinese tech company on developing, again, more crypto solutions, more use cases. So similarly to the... Uh, Switzerland case, right? You do see now not just for profit companies in the space, big players in the space, want to advance the development in this space. You do see a lot of other big players, not a lot of them not for profit, also want to make sure that they play a part in advancing this space. And you know, that is then very key for their own brand name, also, yeah, and visibility again. So, yes, I think again. Just, just a lot of positive news development in this space, right? And yeah, I hope you're having a great time. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you learned something. Um, if you do, please leave a like, please comment, please subscribe, right? And for all my subscribers out there, for all of you watching, listening, I truly, truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much again and hope you're having an amazing day. Yeah, live with passion. Thank you.